XD. So right now, imagine it's the year 2007 and you just logged out of MySpace for the last time and you didn't even know it. Flashback to 2011 when you typed XD on your keyboard for the last time and you had no idea it was going to be replaced by the cry face emoji. These times are tough. And to commemorate these tough times, today I'm wearing my Hawthorne Heights Ohio is for Lovers top. Throwback to 2017 when they did their reunion tour in Melbourne at the Corner Hotel and I did a meet and greet with them and they were the coolest dudes. <laughs> My husband was wearing a Cleveland Cavaliers jersey and <laughs> they were like, why are you wearing a Cavs jersey? <laughs> and then I got to tell them about me being from Ohio so that was super cool. And then we just ended up talking about Cedar Point <laughs> and roller coasters. <laughs> but this is definitely a look like what do you guys reckon? <laughs> oh my god. So, what I've come here to tell you today. So, there's one week left of voting for the 2022 Gods and Monsters calendar. So, I'm actually going to be one of the sponsors for Warm Wood Photography's competition. Unfortunately, if you're seeing this video, the competition is already finished, but you still have one week left to vote for 14 lucky models who are actually going to be featured in the calendar. And we have several incredible sponsors who will be giving away goodie bags for the event, myself included. So here at Inakune Creations, I'm going to be offering $25 gift card, American US dollars. So 10 people will get a $25 gift card from me. And the first, second, and third place winners will actually get a $65 gift card from me. And some of the other sponsors include Pinnacle Props, Mayron Makeup, Hysteria Machine, and Shop Lucifer. If you'd like to check out the goodies, from these incredible designers. I will link them all down below and please go follow Jess at Wormwood Photography. Her creations are absolutely amazing. But yeah, don't miss out on your chance to vote for the next Gods and Monsters calendar models. Super exciting. I can't wait to get my hands on the calendars. Next year at Supernova convention in Melbourne. I'm actually going to be selling the magazines at my stall. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I get Inakune Creations up and running and with co and that and if COVID restrictions ease I am able to do my first copy con there. But yeah, last year's theme was super cool. A few of my friends were actually models in the calendar and it was like alien space babe futuristic vibes. It was so cool. I am like so excited to see the monsters and creatures that Jess and everyone involved comes up with this year. It's gonna be totally awesome. And if you would like to be included and have your say and have your own creative input, Please don't forget to vote. Voting ends on May 15th and the winners will be announced on May 17th. So good luck to all you guys who are models if you are competing in the event. Best of luck. Fingers crossed that you win and can't wait to see what looks you come up with for the magazine.
15 piercings, brass knuckles, bling bling, tight jeans, T-stop, that girl is hot as fuck. She can lead the cheer squad, but that's not her game. She's out to steal your girlfriend and bring her to me. You're just so nasty, girl. You're just so fancy, girl. I wanna take you dancing, girl. You love my mansion, girl. You're just so nasty, girl. You're just so fancy, girl. I wanna take you dancing, girl. You love my mansion, girl. She's so That's my ride and die scene, chick. If I catch you talking shit, I will bust your fucking lips. She's so a piece of ass that my girl wants to grab after every single class and Mr. Quarterback will see who's a fag when your girl's eating pussy in the back of my jag it's getting so fair that the millionaires don't even compare to a player in the stuff she wears, her thick hair with her makeup kicked up, take her upstairs and play with her ears, I'ma stand at y'all night, ya, 36 is making a nigga wanna bite ya, if I could I'd even date ya, for being so good Lift her up as high as you can if she's worth it. Break her down and leave her for dead if she isn't. When you take her in your arms, is she all that you want? Is it real? Do you trust her? Does she trust you? When she takes your hand, does it speak to you? When she fucks you She's a little too much for most guys But she's met her match when I look in her eyes She's the best dress princess with breast into mine She'll drive a slow blade into your heart Anyone else would be torn apart But that's what I like, my beauty sounds right So, the first thing about being a scene kid, everyone fucking loves Hello Kitty. Why? I don't know. She's cute. She's Japanese. She's like a sigil of whatever, for whatever reason. Hello Kitty necklace, Hello Kitty jewelry, and if it's Hello Kitty and leopard print, hey, even better. But... Pretty much any really cutesy cartoon characters, like we've got Care Bear, like check out some of my vintage scene kid t-shirts from my actual high school days. This is Motley Crue, but reimagined as Care Bears, because of course that's adorable. And everyone loved Invader Zim, especially Gurr, who's the star of the show. Waffles, waffles, waffles. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much every Hot Topic had Invader's Zim merch. And not to mention, you've got your favorite crunk core band tees. So J Bigo was one of my faves. What is it with all these scene rappers having their names start with the letter J? Who knows, but you give me puppies, puppies, puppies in my heart. Sad, sad puppies. Whenever we're apart. He said he wrote this song to a girl he had a crush on it while they were volunteering at an animal shelter, so I thought that was pretty freaking cute. And I mean, Pierce the Veil wouldn't be a scene kid without a Pierce the Veil t shirt. Heck yeah. 
and a Skylight Drive. I mean, one of my favorite, technically, I guess you would call them a, a post-hardcore band. <laughs> Man, this shirt is really freaking stained. <laughs> Sky Eats Airplane. It's literally more than like, what, 12, 13 years old? Gotta represent. The perfect balance of like colorful, cute, and like hardcore, brutal like font because you're hardcore. Yeah. And I mean, every scene kid is like, well, there's two types of scene kids. The ones who love drugs and like party hardy, or the ones who are like super straight laced and straight edge. How many of these abbreviations do you know the meaning of? Please comment down below. I mean, I guess technically I'm still a scene kid since I have XVX in my... Instagram's screen name, hey. Seen kids never die. But yeah, being straight edge means you don't do any drugs, you're super cool because you don't drink alcohol or smoke or anything. And you pretty much essentially just think you're better than everybody else who does those things because, ew, gross very elitist group we are. <laughs> I've been straight edge my entire Small life, so... Rise the wake and carry me with all of my What's that have to say about me? How many of you guys remember this epic poem die. by The Used? Throwback. <laughs> it's probably the most depressing thing I've heard in my entire life. It really says a lot about what type of scene kid you are, whether you're Team Ronnie or Team Craig. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, you're probably not a scene kid. So get out of here. Gross. <laughs> and then if you started the sitting to falling in reverse after Ronnie got out of prison, hey. So many Ronnie stands up in this place. And you're not a true scene kid if you don't have hundreds of candy bracelets all the way up your arms to your elbows. The more colorful, the better. That's just the raddest. Like, oh my god. And I mean, what was our fascination with ring pops? Ice cream cones melting, cupcakes melting. Any sort of like dripping frosting that looked like gooey jizz, which is kind of like, I don't know, inappropriate because we were all like 15 years old, but whatevs. Bought them Jeffree Star t-shirts that literally had like <laughs> pictures of cupcakes with freaking razor blades in them because, you know, way to be edgy. Gross. Here's my collection of some of the most like seamster necklaces. Like I got this. Hello Kitty necklace from Claire's when I was like 14. So mm, that's a true vintage piece. <laughs> Again, you can never have too much Hello Kitty or just like Sanrio in general. But I feel like back then the other Sanrio characters, because like, I don't know, scene wasn't super like weeby, like anime and stuff. It was more like focused around like the hardcore music and stuff like that, but we still loved all the kawaii Japanese shit. We just didn't know about it yet because I feel like it wasn't as much involved in pop culture, but like ice cream, bows, love hearts, all the shit. Yeah, fuck yeah. 
not to mention we wore 10 million thousand bows in our hairs and oh god these diamonds how many of y'all have a tattoo of this diamond raise your freaking hand i know a few kids in my high school who got tattoos of this diamond <laughs> made famous by you know the the um epic scene queen herself kiki cannibal she tried to patent the freaking this freaking symbol and then there was some like weird copyright claim with the people who created the logo for superman because like they did it first and i'm just like wtf you literally cannot own the shape of a diamond but apparently she thought so because you know rich girl prompts i don't think crescent moons were really a thing back then like i don't think i mean people like sailor moon but i don't yeah not as much as today but yeah, this color scheme could definitely work for like a, a modern scene day outfit. But yeah, they didn't really exist back then. Or not really anywhere that I've seen anyways. Oh, my favorite part. We're on a hair accessories. Literally, these little like clippies, like these little hair clips that you can get in the baby section at like Walmart or pretty much any dollar store. Just throw a whole heap of them on your head and you're good to go. And like all of the hair bows you can find in the hot top accessory section, the more leopard print, the better. I mean, we got some um, mermaid print, I feel like wasn't really that big back then. I don't think it really existed yet, but hey, it probably did somewhere. It just wasn't as mainstream as it is now. More Hello Kitty, all the Hello Kitty. My aunt used to make these really cool like bows. This rainbow stripe one is one that she made for me and like... I still have it like 10 years later and you know shout out to more invaders in I think I literally wore this cupcake bow to death pretty much any photo you'll see of me from the age of like 15 to 18 I have the fucking thing in my hair and oh my god do y'all remember happy tree friends that shit was morbid AF I can't believe they actually had that one television for children to watch like these little furry fuckers are decapitating each other and shit. It's pretty, uh, pretty graphic to be completely honest. Oh, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, me without like a bleeding, bleeding, blood dripping heart because I'm just, you know, so edgy AF. Mm. But yeah, I literally wore a hair bow in my hair every single day, no matter what. Like, from, like, ninth grade to my senior year. Every day. Every single day. Now comes the fun part. You're not a true scene kid if you don't have coontail striped hair extensions. Again, made famous by Kiki Cannibal. Shout out, because I guess she did it first. She would always claim, like, on MySpace that she did everything first, but hey. She was the first person I'd seen with it anyway, so maybe she did. Who knows? I'm just using this Transylvania black hair dye from Arctic Fox, because, like, let's be honest, it's all I had. It did the job. Black is black. It's black as my, my little beady soul which I don't have because uh god having a soul would be so uncool gross oh my god now that looks totally bitchin Next, you'll see how the whole look turns out. You wouldn't be a scene kid without doing these 
stupid heart gestures with your hands. <laughs> All like, this was before Yubu was a thing, but love heart hands are pretty much the original Yubu to your like <laughs> virtual boyfriend who lives like a million states away, like in Arkansas or some shit. He's your scene kid internet boyfriend. Because, like, internet dating was such a huge thing. We never dated people in real life. <laughs> so, now it's time to straighten your already straight hair to death. Because, like, come on. As if the ends of my hair don't already look like they're dead enough. Let's just, how about we just fry the absolute shit out of it. Yeah. And I would do this every single day. I would also wash my hair every single day and tease it fresh every single morning. I'm not even exaggerating when I'd say I woke up at 3.45 a.m. to get on my bus at 7.30 a.m. I would do my hair and makeup like this every single day. So what I'm doing here, because I don't want to dye my hair black, fuck that. I'm actually doing a clip-in fringe inspired by Audrey Kitching, the ultimate scene queen. And I'm <laughs> Oh my god. Only in America. <laughs> I had you guys. Sorry about it. But not really. See, I didn't even realize some of these are like a brown color. I probably should have like only used the black ones. Like, how unseen to me. Gross. And it probably would have been easier if I cut them first before putting them in my hair. But hey, whatevs. What's done is done. So, I'm sort of clipping a really long track of them in the middle of my head. At the back. So you'll see a few like pieces of them. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like smaller webs. I think they're only two, two clips. See these little ones? I'm going to do one of them on each side. Kind of like shoved up into the middle of my hair so you can see some of the black bits peeking through the blonde. But we're going to just chop the obliterate shit out of the blonde anyways and do 10 million thousand billion layers and have it all sticking up all over the place. So party. I don't think Adore Delano was even a thing back then, so I don't know where that came from. Hmm. If you said party, you're probably like a Blood on the Dance Floor fan. Like, party, hearty, grab the cardi, talk your shit, watch you get hurt, save the drama for your mama, what's up with that awful gossip? Don't be mad cause my hair is so rad, life is good up in my hood. Bitches get stitches, they end up with ditches, so get the riches. Bitches get stitches, end up with stitches, get the riches. If that is not cringe, I don't even know what it is. Somebody kill me. Take me out to pasture. I'm ready. It's my time. So a real scene kid would do this with a freaking razor, but like, hey, this is all I had on hand, okay? I cut the black bit underneath first to get my layers right. Now I'm just sorting out the blonde part on top. So I'm starting at the very like top section of my hair and I'm just getting like most of this bulk off. Like it's just too much fucking hair. So I'm just like cutting it wherever the heck I feel like it. I mean, I'm a scene kid. I'm not a hairdresser, but I think I am. Harlots go to hair school. Beauty school dropout. Anyone? I got crickets. <laughs> My gosh, yes. It's already looking super like... This haircut doesn't make sense at all, and it's not meant to. It's just like pieces sticking up here, there, everywhere. <laughs> That's the best part. So I'm going to shut the fuck up now so you can enjoy this super rad 
scene soundtrack that I have installed for you, so you're welcome. Enjoy, bitches! Wow, like I missed you guys so much. But check out this close up of my hair. Like, how sick do these coontails look? Yes. Are you jealous? Because, like, you better be. I clipped one underneath my fringe, like this little part here, and then on the other side, you saw I kind of just put it in the middle. So, now to the fun part. We're gonna tease this shit the fuck up. So, you need a teasing comb and a, like, a pick. So, you literally want to start at the root of your hair and pack that shit down. And then, once you've got it all packed, you go to the ends of your hair and then you just, like, push it down. Literally, and your hair is gonna stand straight up like this because it is so dry, it has been straightened one too many times. And like, we're not done, we're probably gonna straighten it five more times just because it's still not straight enough for us. But I mean, us seen kids, none of us are straight, we're all like bisexual or gay. Or, we don't even know what the word pansexual means yet, because it's like 2005. But yeah, I'm that. Sounds good to me. Oh my god, look at that hair. It's just sticking up everywhere. Rock. So now I've got my pick and what I'm doing, I'm just like pretty much just like combing it together. Like the pieces where it's like not together, I'm literally just like putting it together. Yeah. Too much hairspray. Not enough brain cells. Sorry about it. But like not really because I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel so cute already. Sonic the Hedgehog vibe. Fuck yeah. It's hairspray time. If you don't have enough 
<laughs> hairspray in your hair to like go up in flames if you walk near an open fire, you're not doing it right. You literally need an entire bottle to like create this luscious helmet of spiky death. <laughs> if you can breathe, you're not doing this right. You need to inhale so much um, hairspray fumes that you literally just like drop over dead. Oh my god. So what I'm doing, I'm grabbing like little sections of hair and I've got hairspray on my fingers. So I'm just like creating these little spikes. Like I rub the hairspray through the ends and just get these funky little like sections so it looks really like cool. Sort of. I don't know. Is there a word for this? Spiking your hair? I don't know. I think I'm a hairdresser, but really I'm just a, a scene kid in wolf's clothing. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think I do. Oh my god. Like, WTF. STFU. Primer? What? What for? I didn't use any of that shit. Bitch, I didn't even know what concealer was. I literally just put like the whitest foundation shade all over my body. Ten shades too white? Yeah. Looks about right. Sounds like a plan. Looks good to me. And to be honest, when I was doing my scene can makeup when I was like 15, I am the ripe old age of 28 now and also like a professional makeup artist. Bitch, I just put that shit on with my hand. So, I mean, we're cheating. We're using a beauty blender today. This is like my glow up version of a scene kid. Sorry about it. But like, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I don't even think back then I would blend it down my neck. So like, man, that's some effort. If you're a scene boy and you just want this like really dead look, like put this white shit all over your face, but leave your under eyes like really dark and sunken in and you get like a Burt McCracken moment. You could even rub some red eyeshadow under your eyes to really enhance the effect. You know, get that foundation all up in your hair too. Cause like, you know, it looks like you just crawled out of a crypt. Add some mud and dirt in your hair, you know, a few twigs, maybe some berries. Save a snack for later. I mean, it's big enough. You could, you could like, uh, put a whole, I don't know, have a whole picnic stashed up in there. You know what, bitch? Once I saw this episode of Mori Povich, it was these really cool, like, ladies. A lot of African-American ladies. Like, you're going to the fucking, I don't know, hair show in Orlando or some shit. Or some, like, really cool southern state. So, one more Povich, it was literally a hair themed <laughs> episode, like what the fuck, I don't even know. So, I put concealer on my eyes and I am setting that shit. But let me tell you, this girl, this woman, she had a little cage in her hair and what she did, it was in the top of her hair, like a little basket, and it had a lid on it. And I am not kidding you, she opened up that lid and two little... I think they were sparrows. I don't freaking know. Two little birds flew out of her freaking hair. Oh my god. Shook. Shook. We're taking it to that level. So, just letting you know, this is the first eyeshadow that I ever bought. I was like, I don't know, 12, 11 at Hot Topic. I was like, Grandma, oh my god, I need this pink eyeshadow. Because my mom wouldn't let me shop at Hot Topic. She thought it was like gothic and weird and like... She thought kids were going to bully me and like, well, they did, but for a good reason. I look like this. <laughs> Just kidding. To be honest, I didn't really get many bullies either that or I didn't really give a fuck. Um, everybody loved me, to be completely honest with you. Because I'm a fucking peach. Oh my god. But this eyeshadow is from Manic Panic and it's called Pussy Galore. <laughs> I repurchased it as soon as I could in my uh, ripe old age again of 29. We're not going to tell anybody. Oh wait, no, bitch, I'm 28. 
I mean, it wouldn't be a scene kid video if I didn't have ice cream inspired something. So this is a Neapolitan highlighter from OMFG Cosmetics. And bitch, look at that glow. Yes. I mean, to be honest, I did not even own highlighter at this age. I literally put like a matte white eyeshadow all over my eyelid, like above, under, all over. And like, I don't know, I thought that was a primer, I thought it was a highlighter, I thought it was something. I just put this chalky ass matte white all over my eyelid. I caked it on. Don't ask me why. So we're gonna curl them lashes. So now you get the blackest black eyeliner that exists in the world, like the epitome of like oblivion and darkness and just everything else that is black like your soul. I mean if you don't bleed eyeliner by the end of the day then you're not doing it right so sorry about it but like not really. Sucks to be you. Mm. Go die. Gross. We were really mean. I, well, I don't think we were intentionally mean as seen kids. The shit we said was like really harsh. Like we would t literally tell people, go fucking kill yourself. Or like, fall in a hole and die. Go play in traffic. And like, we thought it was really edgy and funny, but like, it's actually really mean. And probably triggered people in like a downward spiral of like suicidal thoughts. So like, yeah, don't do that. Don't be fucking mean. Whatevs. So I'm just taking this black as black. Is black as black as black hole AF. Black hole darkness. Bleh. Eyeshadow from Sugar Pill. It's called Bulletproof. That shit is bulletproof. Unlike my heart. <laughs> So, you can see one eye I blended out, I'm going to show you how I did that. So, I'm taking this fluffy eyeshadow brush, and I'm just putting that shit on my eye. Easy as that. Done deal, homies. Oh, gotta flick my bangs, get them like perfectly, perfectly like placed. Such a cool scene, Fringe. So, I'm putting a little bit of product on the brush and just like blending it, but not really because like, scene kids don't wear blended eyeshadow, like, what? Why would you blend your eyeshadow? What for? What's the point? You want to look like you've got makeup stuck on your eyes and like, you've been punched in the face a couple times. Hey black it out so what I'm doing I'm kind of making it like a darker black like near my lash line and then as it goes up towards my eyebrow like higher up in my crease I try to sort of kind of blend it but not really because like <laughs> gross people would tell me all the time they'd be like oh my god blend your eyeshadow Now on to eyebrows. Pluck them so thin and do this really high like crazy arch because like 
That's in fashion. Yeah. You want to look pissed off 100, 1,000 percent of the time, okay? You want to look really unapproachable. I mean, no one's going to stop and ask me for directions looking like this. Bitch, they're going to run the other way. They're going to be like, this homeless lady's going to mug me or some shit. <laughs> she looks mean. Raw. I'm like, good bitch, I like it that way. Stay the fuck away from me. I'm gonna do my other eyebrow off camera and BRB bitches. why I think I did blend it too much and it ended up looking purple in the end so rural kids that's what you get for blending your eyeshadow don't do it I just took more black eyeshadow on my brush and I'm kind of like kind of trying to blend the two colors together but again like not really just really just like sticking it on however you know them memes of cats and they're like sitting in boxes they're like if I fits, I sits. Yeah, bitch. If it sticks on my face, like, you know, it's on there. Stay stuck. Now I'm taking this funky, like, blue color. It's like a metallic blue. The pink was, like, matte-ish. Fuck if I know. I don't know. I think in the end it sort of ended up turning out green, but, like, whatevs. I'm just putting this all up under my eye. And, like, I really did wear my blue eyeshadow like this in high school. Like, I had that one pink eyeshadow from Manic Panic that I showed you that I put on as blush. Pussy galore. And then I had this really funky, like, Revlon metallic blue eyeshadow that I'd always do under my eyes. Like, that was my go-to color combo. Hot pink on top and, like, baby blue. Well, this, like, funky metallic-ass blue, like, 80s AF under my eyes. And I would wear that every day to school. Just like that. Not even kidding. That's hot. Mm. That's the sex. I don't really know anyone who said that. Like, people said seen kids said that, but like, I never actually heard anyone say the sex. Other than the song from Dot Dot Curve. Yeah, I'm the sex bitch. Yeah, I'm the sex. Yeah, I'm the sex bitch. Yeah, I'm the sex. That's literally the only time I ever heard that in my whole damn life. I'm pretty sure some people on Urban Dictionary just like made that shit up. Unless maybe it's like a West Coast thing. Because bitch, we're East Coast emos. Fuck it up. Everybody knows an emo kid from Ohio. Like, don't pretend you don't. I think this shade's called, like, Ice Angel or something. But, like, anything that's, like, white and shimmery. Bitch. Yes. I'm pretty sure Jeffree Star had these exact same eyebrows. Gross. This color is called I'm Nude. Because that's so edgy. I mean, I'd really just wear concealer and like a clear lip gloss on my lips all the time. I wanted to sort of erase my lips, but like, I don't know, I wanted them to look wet and juicy, but like the same color as my skin. I mean, like the really cool, like 
indie sort of girls that would wear like American apparel and shit like sort of bordering and hipster with their like cool as fuck moccasins they would always pop on like a bright red lipstick and they'd be like oh my god I'm so vintage pinup vibes yes I got my black eyelash glue, putting it on my lashes. When did we do mascara? Fuck if I know. I'm getting old. Senile. Forgetting shit. But like, I put on a fuck ton of mascara. I probably did like at least seven or eight layers. So, as a scene kid, you want to put mascara on your fake lashes too. And like, the crustier the better. Yes, it's all coming together. We look like we just crawled out of a freaking, I don't know, some bar crawl two days later, like. I will make a fan sign for the 
If you comment down below, I'll make a fan sign for you just like it was 2011, I would say. You can get your very own fan sign too. Remember, weren't those the days? For real though, if you comment down below your favorite scene kid band, <laughs> I would love to know. No comment. I used to be a fan of Blood on the Dance Floor, but with recent up uh, allegations against Dobby Vanity. Um, in the words of the wise and true Randy Jackson, that's a no for me dog. But crunk core bands that I do recommend, Broken Side, Dropping a Pop Locket, Dot Dot Curve, Spanky j Rec, JG Demon, Jake Wolf, J Bigger, lots of J's. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's a, an Illuminati sign that the scene kids like J's. We like to drink juice boxes. Stick that in your juice box and suck it. What do you think of my purple and black coontails? Is that the sex? I think they're totally the sex. Do you remember when Jeffree Star made music? Now everyone and their mom owns his lipstick. Stick that in your juice box and suck it. Remember when all the scene kids thought it was edgy to say the n-word? Not with a hard R, but still. That would not be accepted in today's day and age. There are some crunk core musics that have not aged well. If you're my sidekick, we're always rocking And most of the time I'm always staring at your page Looking at your pictures and I'm always amazed <laughs>
thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope that you consider taking the time for voting for Wormwood Photography's Gods and Monsters calendar, calendar competition. It would really mean a lot. And thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my Scene Kid transformation videos, let me know. I'll be here all week. And, I mean, this hair exists now. I need an excuse to wear it. <laughs> Don't find me your picture in my book.